All right, we are here with uh, one of our favorite guests to always chat with, oh. Carrie Silkenhair from you. Ring of Honor. And Carrie, obviously a, a big weekend as uh, WrestleMania weekend always is for Ring of Honor. As a, a lot of fans, I think, that read about Ring of Honor, get to see the TV show. This is kind of a weekend where maybe they get to see the product live for the first time. Yeah, and it's uh, become a tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, go, dating back to, uh, yeah, I hope I might get my dates right, but dating back to 04 yep. in uh, Elizabeth, New Jersey. Elizabeth, New Jersey. And uh, I mean, probably don't have the order right, but Chicago, Detroit, Phoenix, Houston, um, Tampa, um, Orlando was Orlando, one year. And let's not forget Atlanta last year. Yep. I probably left one out. But, you know, here we are, Fort Lauderdale. Um, and it's really cool for me personally because I get to see a lot of good friends mm -hmm. and a lot of fans that come. Uh, I just met a guy that came 12,000 miles from Australia, wow. which is pretty cool. And they come, you know, to see some wrestling, obviously for WrestleMania. And while in town, why not check out some of the best wrestling in the world, Ring of Honor? It's kind of amazing to look back at just, you know, from that one show in Elizabeth, New Jersey, to what this weekend has grown into. I mean, this is the biggest weekend by far for the, on the wrestling calendar for everybody. Absolutely, and uh, I think as a f from a fan's perspective, it's good, you know, there's uh, different choices to see, you know, as well as the Hall of Fame and uh, other companies, and uh, it's a pretty cool thing. Tell us a bit about uh, Ring of Honor was kind of one of the companies at the forefront moving into to internet pay-per-views from, you know, the numbers that go, go out there have been very, very successful for you guys. What do you think has been that transition of kind of, it used to be just you'd wait for the DVD and now it's much more a live as it happens experience for the audience at home? Well, everybody knows, you know, technology changes. You know, if we would go back... Uh I don't know, 30 years, you know, from uh, records to cassettes, eight tracks to, oh, there's CDs, you know, what's that? You know, but the, the media's change, and uh, people uh, with the internet and um, social, so, social media and whatnot, people want instant gratification more than ever. Mm -hmm. And that is accomplished through the, uh, you know, why not be able to see a show live? And the internet pay-per-view, although not everyone is, uh, I think, comfortable with it yet, uh, it's becoming more uh, recognized, and for you know, ten bucks or fourteen dollars, you could you know join your favorite wrestling company uh, anywhere in the world, and it uh, you know it's a good deal, and it's good for us for the exposure. And now with the Sinclair Broadcasting Network behind Ring of Honor, uh, we're in 25 percent of the country, and you're giving a lot of people the opportunity that really didn't know that we existed, you know, the non-internet wrestling fans. And uh, hopefully some of them will be joining us uh, with this pay-per-view, as well as some of the future ones, including when we come to Toronto. That's right. You're going to be up in our neck of the woods in Toronto, May the 12th, for, uh, for Border Wars. Ooh. And Toronto's got to be one of, one of your favorite cities, uh, Frank Tunney territory. Yeah, it is. You know, it's, it's a, it's a, we've spoken about this before, but it's, it's a, it has a rich wrestling history. I remember I was... You know, I like to jog once in a while, and I was jogging downtown, and the, the Maple Leaf Gardens is still there, right? It's, it's now a a, uh, a food a grocery well, store. A couple of years ago, they, 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 at least there was a... Was it there? Or? Oh, it's still there. It's uh, on college. Wait, but, you know, for me to see that, you know, a historic wrestling building like that. I remember when I was a kid, I used to watch hockey and the Ranger, you know, I still watch it, but the Ranger games were always on Saturday nights on right. Channel 9 in New York. And any time they were playing Toronto, I would see in the background, this is pre-digital uh, advertising at the shows, you know, in the old block letters, it would say oh, yeah. like, next Saturday, wrestling. And I was like, oh man, I wish I could be there. <laughs> but yeah, Toronto's an awesome town. It's a cosmopolitan city. You know, I'm a New York guy. And I love coming to Toronto and as far as wrestling the fans are great we haven't been there in a while and uh, I as, as from a fans perspective I because I know probably know a little bit more about the card that's gonna come than it's been announced this is gonna be absolutely probably one of the best ring of honor cards on paper uh, in a long time. I no, mean, no we, scoops for us. We'd, now, we'd like to think, you know, tonight is the all-time greatest show and it's going to be good. But um, this one is going to be a doozy. There's going to be some surprises. And uh, I think, the, you know, we, we want to reestablish ourselves because we were coming to Toronto fairly regularly and it's been a little while. So we, did, we owe the fans something. I know you were a guy that always followed kind of that, that Northeast wrestling mm -hmm. scene, and uh, I've got to imagine uh, the passing of Dick Worley, who was just such an instrumental figure there for the, the wrestling fan up in the, in the Northeast, as well as boxing. Yeah, I, I mean, I never got, I never read the, uh, 
chance to meet Dick Worley, but, you know, having befriended some of the guys that have passed through the Ring of Honor locker room, guys that I speak to once in a while, uh, Bushwhacker Luke's a friend of mine, and I was talking to Jerry Lynn, and uh, everybody had a nice thing to say about Dick Worley. He's an interesting guy. He started as a, uh, a boxing referee, and uh, he morphed his way into pro wrestling, and... Uh, you know, Vince McMahon Sr. really liked him, and he was the main guy for a long time. And he worked for a lot of companies, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's sad for his passing, but he left a hell of a mark. No one has a bad thing to say about him. My last question, Kerry, is just we, uh, we haven't chatted with you in about a year, and I just wanted to, to get a sense of uh, uh, the whole transition period over, over to Sinclair. Obviously, it had to have been a, a tough transition for you just making that decision, but what has Sinclair added uh, to Ring of Honor? Obviously, we, th we see the television every week, but obviously, this was something necessary. It was necessary, and I mean, anybody who, you know, that has any kind of understanding of any kind of business would know that a multi-million dollar company that's traded on the New York Stock Exchange has a lot better chance to uh, bring this product to where it should be. You know, there was only a certain limit to what I could do, you know, I, and, I, and uh, I was, I'm proud to have been able to keep the product alive and make the transition to Sinclair. They have the best interests, and I said this from the beginning, and it's the truth, they've never, uh, you know, people are like, oh no, it's more corporate wrestling. They haven't compromised anything with the wrestling. The guys behind the scenes, having guys like Jim Cornette and Delirious uh, in the back, um, and uh, they, it's uh, maybe people won't believe this, but you know, there's never any messing around with the creative here, and uh, the you know the the ability and the power they have, you know, financially, and they're you know they're behind the project. So I think uh, we haven't even really seen it blossom yet. Well, we look forward to seeing uh, you guys uh, up in Toronto on May the 12th. It's going to be Border Wars airing at GFL.TV. We're going to try and uh, squeeze some matches here at a, at a carry after the camera goes off here. But uh, it's going to be a hell of an eye pay-per-view coming up on May the 12th in Toronto at Ted Reeve Arena.